There are no words and no video that can express to you how that feels. Oi, Dolly. <laughs> Ever since I was a young boy, I've always been fascinated in anything with wheels. I didn't care what I could drive, whether it was a toy car, pedal tractor, or a go-kart. I begged to be taken to car shows and dealerships and dreamed of the day I could pass my driving test, which finally came in 2014, just three months after turning 17. I spent all of my time driving with friends or drag racing my dad in my Vauxhall Corsa. And since then, it's been a long, hard climb up the ladder. One of my dreams in life, like most of us petrol heads, is to own a Ferrari. But at the very least, a chance to drive one would mean just as much. You see, there's nobody in my family that's ever owned an exotic car. So I started creating content online in order to gain access to events, getting me closer to these sorts of vehicles. I landed a dream job with Seen Through Glass, traveling with him to pick up a 488 from the factory in Maranello, and I've experienced some incredible cars from behind the wheel since then. But I never thought the day would actually come where I could drive a Ferrari. Until now, yep, today is the first time in my life that I've had a key to a Ferrari in my hand. And today I'm gonna finally achieve one of my lifelong dreams, which is to drive a Ferrari. And this is a really special Ferrari because back when I was a kid, looking at those showrooms, these are the cars that were in there. The Ferrari 360, made from 2000 to 2005. Those are the exact years that I developed my love for cars, for me from the age of three to eight. And here we are, it feels so, so surreal. Now, I'm not gonna waste any time. This, of course, has a lid on it that we can get rid of and it's not raining, so we're immediately going to take the roof off, and I think that's only going to enhance this experience. Now, of course, I'm immeasurably excited, but I'm also a little bit apprehensive because I have anticipated this day for so, so long. I mean, since I was a boy, more than 20 years. And so I really don't want it to be a disappointment let's just get on with it shall we so we've got to start this car now i've got to click this immobilizer button the red light there stays solid and now <laughs> she fires into life is a F1 paddle transmission, uh, which I have to admit actually excites me more than a manual one. I think a part of these cars is this F1 transmission. It's quirks, the way it's a little bit jolty and maybe slightly aggressive and a little bit dodgy around town. Certainly with my experiences with the BMW SMG transmissions, which by all intents and purposes are woeful, I've actually really enjoyed using them. I believe that they add to the character of the car. And with that then, let's pull a paddle. First gear, we can press auto down here for the car to be in automatic transmission, but I'm told it will just stay in manual unless you tell it otherwise. So that's how I intend to drive it. Immediately, these big wing mirrors that arch over the sides, revealing that gorgeous view of the intakes. This is really emotional for me, actually. I can't believe I'm driving a Ferrari. And already, at 20 miles an hour, I can sense the drama. Whoa! That was my first downshift from third to second. Initial impressions. Oh, the car is dominated by that engine. This being a 360, it has a 3.6 litre V8. And these aren't particularly powerful, actually. Less than 400 horsepower, 395 to be precise, and only around 270 pounds foot of torque. In fact, because the Spider was a little bit heavier, these are almost five seconds 0 to 60. So by no stretch of the imagination, really, is this 
a fast car by today's standards. But as we enter this motorway slit road, I'm pretty sure it's still gonna be an experience because of this sound. I'm gonna put the windows up because I fear you're probably not gonna hear me too well. Interesting window switches, they're in the center, but you can't, as the driver, access both of them at the same time. When you get above 6,000 RPM, the sound fully takes over. This car has actually got an aftermarket exhaust system, nothing silly, and I've forgotten the name of the company, but it looks to me just like a custom back box, potentially with some less pipes or baffling inside. And it is just truly mesmerizing, not just the note, but the sheer noise this thing makes. I've never experienced anything like it. So call it convenient or deliberate, whatever you will. In front of me now is uh, one of the UK's longest tunnels. It's the Hindhead Tunnel here on the A3. And I can think of no better place to induct myself to driving a Ferrari with a glorious V8 and exhaust than through a really, really long tunnel. So I might just encourage you now to slightly turn down your TVs or if you're using headphones, really take them off and listen through your phone because I think this is going to be something else. Are you ready? I'm not sure I'm ready. Gosh. There are no words and no video that can express to you how that feels. Oh my goodness me. When I was a little boy walking around the Ferrari dealership, I don't think I ever would have imagined myself driving a 360 Spider crying at <laughs> the noise. That is truly unlike anything I've ever experienced. Let's go through the tunnel again. I think I have genuinely died gone to heaven. I am unbelievable. <laughs> there really is no words. And I'm almost certain that on camera, on the video you're watching right now, it's not going to sound anything close to how it does from where I'm sitting. motorway at 70 miles per hour, sixth gear. There's a little bit of a drone. I suppose that's the trade-off for having such an unbelievable pitch and tone of sound when you put your foot down. Other than that, it's actually remarkably civilized in here. The car rides tremendously well. I'm told that it has had a lot of work done at AV Engineering in recent years to get it basically spot on. And it feels just that. Also, I've got the roof down, and in most cars, you wouldn't be able to see anything because your hair would be blowing in front of your face. There'd be stuff flying around in the cabin all over the place, anything that's not completely strapped in by concrete. Yet, in this, I'm getting none of that. Actually, I'm barely getting a whisper of wind on my neck. I'm finding the F1 gearbox to be quite enjoyable. 
not because it's really good. It is sluggish, like people say, and a little bit jolty at slower speeds. But I feel like if I work with it and do better, it will reward me, and it, it does. You know, when you get it just right, you pull, lift a little bit on the pedal, and then push again. It's really lovely, and you can actually shift very smoothly in this car if you just work with it a little bit. And I quite like that. It does feel like a real driving experience. I wondered if this being an early noughties car, it would still feel, I don't know, a little bit compromised and electronic, but it really doesn't. It feels, in comparison to anything from 10 years ago or sooner, so, so analog, so mechanical, and just like a real experience, a real man and machine pairing. In front of me, I've got a gorgeous big rev counter showing my red line of eight and a half thousand RPM, which, well, we didn't save it till last. We've already experienced that, and it's utterly worth getting all the way up there. See which gear I'm in, in the middle, and on the left, we have three gauges. One, which is our oil pressure, another for our oil temperature, and the furthest on the left for our water temperature, all in Fahrenheit, which again is just a nice quirky touch reminding you that you're in something Italian. On the right hand side, we've got that speedo, which just has this imprint in my head of genuinely peering through the window in the showroom of a Ferrari 360 when it was Grey Pools of Loughborough a long time ago and seeing 220 miles an hour. I couldn't believe it as a child and I can't believe I'm looking at that from the driver's seat right now. It evokes such a nostalgic feeling in me. I, I can't even begin to, to describe that to you. But the rev counter dominates. On the lower right, there's a fuel gauge. And I have to say, I actually put 40 pounds in this earlier and the fuel gauge didn't move. So either the fuel gauge isn't working or the tank's just massive or maybe I just all of a sudden started driving really economically. I don't really know but you're not really paying attention to any of that because all you can really pay attention to is that engine behind your head. <laughs> I don't know where the Ferrari 360 ranks on the how good it sounds leaderboard when it comes to Italian supercars. The F430 is meant to sound pretty good, but I just can't get my head around anything. Anything with a V8, even beginning to sound anywhere near as orchestral and symphonic as this. Uh, I mean, honestly, I've watched countless YouTube videos with Ferraris, many with the 360, especially when Sam Seen Through Glass had his Modena and through all of those hours of watching and listening uh, nothing could have prepared me for the way it really truly sounds and feels in person is this what i expected no it's far surpasses anything i could have possibly imagined <laughs> So I'm gonna flick this little button on the right here for sport mode. No idea what it does. If it's anything like my Z4 I used to have, potentially it just gives us a little bit more sharpness on the throttle. And I think it does, yeah. It feels a bit more alive all of a sudden. And this is a really lovely. I don't know if there's any point in me talking because this is so loud. But we have found some We have found some corners and now I'm gonna try and do a a bit of my job and tell you a little bit how this feels. I like the steering wheel straight away. It's a nice place for your hands, very well thought out. It's an earlier Ferrari, so it's not got any of the funky buttons and manatino and indicators on the wheel. They're still in the form of stalks to the side. I'm really enjoying that this thing is so unintimidatingly fast in the sense that 
I'm actually driving quite hard and I'm not breaking the speed limit. In fact, I was doing 40 to 50 miles per hour all the time there. This being mid-engined, of course, inherently, the balance is great and it feels as such. The 360 Spider, it's not quite as heavy as I thought. It's only just over, I think it's about 15, 50 kilograms. The Spider was 60 kilograms heavier than the Coupe variant, and I think the Challenge Finale was 1430 or something, so quite a lot lighter than this, but it doesn't really feel heavy at all. It doesn't feel that fast, but that's down to the slight lack of power compared to what we're used to today. But I have to say, when I read that, oh, it's 0 to 60 in four and a bit seconds, nearly five, and it's only got 395 horsepower, I thought I'd be a little bit underwhelmed with the performance, but I'm, I'm not at all, actually. It feels kind of as I expected, if not a little bit quicker. But actually, what's interesting is I never would have assumed that a modern-ish Ferrari could be something that you could really exploit on the public roads, but this one is just that. You can go pretty much through first, second, and a tiny bit of third before busting the speed limit ridiculously. And actually, that's where this car is happiest because cruising now in fifth and sixth, as I'm trying to keep the noise down a little bit for you guys, it's not, you know, it's not, the car doesn't feel as happy as, you know, I'm very happy cruising along here in my Ferrari, the roof down, but you can sense actually that the car wants to be driven and it wants to be pushed. And this one actually, in particular, has had a great life. It's got 51,500 miles on it. And so this thing is just singing for joy because throughout its 23 year life, it has been used and enjoyed. There's a tiny little underpass here, so let's find second gear. And this thing makes me pull faces that I didn't know my face could do. The brakes feel really sharp. The pedal feels perfect, actually. Not ever so much travel on it, but you just get the perfect amount of pressure back from the pedal. The throttle pedal, on the other hand, is long and it allows you to progressively build through the revs and also be a little bit more sympathetic with that clutch around town. It does actually make the shifting, the upshifting in particular, very easy. If I show you here, so if I just plant it and shift, I won't do that again because the car doesn't like it, it really lurches. But because I've got so much depth on the pedal, I can really just feel the gear change, pull the pedal, lift a slight bit, barely any lurch, barely any drama, and we're through the gear just as fast. I really like this F1 gearbox. I'm sure I wouldn't like it when it comes to a clutch change or flywheel or something like that. I dread to think how much that costs, but when it's working, and it's doing a great job right now, I like how you have to work with it. I guess similar to a manual gearbox in that sense. The paddles themselves too feel absolutely fantastic. They're super, super tactile. I mentioned these seats. These are the comfort seats. I'm not sure if they were called Daytona by this point, but if I'm correctly versed, I think that is the comfort name for Ferrari's comfort seats. But anyway, these are the comfortable ones. They're electronically adjustable and they're extremely comfortable. I've probably driven this about two hours now today and I'm not having any issues at all. And I am the first to get a little bit squeaky on my back after a little while sitting down. Also in the cabin, yeah, there's no cup holders, but you've got great big door bins, which are far big enough for your phone and your wallet and your keys. And there's even a glove box over here, which you can get a small few items in too. Inside the car though, it is very basic. There's almost nothing. We've got the wheel, we've got the dials, we've got the various controls, a little bit of air conditioning. There is a head unit in on this car, though I've not tried it. The very dinky little gearbox controller here, some switch gear for the bonnet, the fuel cap, the rear hatch and the roof, electronically adjustable mirrors, and that is pretty much your lot. It's very minimalistic. I don't know why, but I've always loved the way that in Ferraris, there's sort of no central trim here and you can sort of see all the way through to the passenger's footwell. It just feels really low slung and fun. I don't know if this is because I have driven quite a few cars in 
different parts of the world and I can get custom to things quite quickly, but it doesn't feel intimidating to drive in any way. Like I say, it's not particularly overpowered. The gearbox can be challenging at slow speeds, but actually if you stick it in auto, you can just let it do its thing and expect a few lumps and bumps here and there, a little bit like turbulence on a plane. But I think with the big wing mirrors that arch out over the side of the car, and the great view out front and the, the roof down especially out back, uh, I never got any issues sort of thinking, oh, am I gonna hit that, am I gonna hit that? It's very, it's very easy to drive is what I'm trying to say. And I suppose, again, maybe because I'd built it up so much in my head and it's a Ferrari, maybe I'll below at this point if you have driven a Ferrari which was it and what was your experience was it as euphoric as the one that I'm having now or was it something else also if you have any experience with the 360 in particular I'd love to know what your thoughts are on the thing I'm certainly now very keen to try out a Ferrari F430 because well, they're not too much more expensive than a 360 of an equivalent mileage or spec yet they are just that much more modern. They're a lot more powerful, almost 500 horsepower in the 430, and really the start of the modern day Ferrari as we know it now. So I think for me now, I'm going to pull over, and I think we should just take this all in because it's just been something that I'm not gonna forget for probably ever, actually. Well, I don't really know how to make sense of that. I suppose, when you do something that you've been anticipating for so long and you actually enjoy it, I think it just takes a long time to process. I feel extremely grateful for this opportunity. I want to thank Rowan again for allowing me to drive his gorgeous 360 Spider. Now that we've pulled over, I just want to talk you through a little bit. Firstly, I just want to touch on the spec of this particular car. For me, it's spot on. Rosso Corsa, I believe it's Rosso Corsa. I'll put on the screen now if it's something different crema interior and red carpets to match the paintwork. Absolutely fantastic dream spec for me. I love how even on the Spider, you got the benefit of seeing the exposed engine. On things like the Audi R8 of today, it's covered. If you have the Spider, you can't see the engine like you can with the coupe, whereas this, they left it. And there's actually a hatch, all this toggle here, and we can open this up, it will be very hot, but I can, there you go, open it up and it reveals the glorious 3.6 litre V8, which it just looks massive. And you can see right down to the catalytic converters and the manifold. And actually, I'm very surprised that this thing has catalytic converters because it is so loud. This is also where you can top up your engine oil, but it is extremely hot back here. But I just love not only that you can see the engine bay with the spider, but you can open up the hatch as well and 
literally get full access. And then if I pull this toggle, that opens up the front of the car. And I just wanted to show you this as well because it is quite impressive. And I suppose if anyone is watching this video that might be wanting to own a 360 Ferrari, um, this is probably quite useful to know. The boot, it's actually really capacious. I was quite surprised to be honest. Again, the best thing I can compare it to is like a modern day R8, which I thought was okay, or a Porsche 911. I don't know the literage, but this, as far as I can see, is, is bigger than both of those. You could easily get two cabin sized suitcases, not soft bags, suitcases in here. And I think here is the cabin filter, potentially something else under there. Also, the windscreen washer. Uh, reservoir is here right at the front which is quite strange so far away from the windscreen but yeah I was quite pleasantly surprised by this to be honest if you wanted to take this on a, a week's long trip you could take plenty of stuff for you and your wife or your friend or whoever it might be original luggage sets and I believe toolkit in here as well um, very very impressive indeed wasn't expecting that the other thing I just wanted to point out quickly as well is that this car is actually on Michelin Pilots but it deals with imperfections in the road relatively well. And the handling is fantastic. It has quick steering, which is what I had expected. It might not be quite as communicative as I had thought. And also when you get quite a lot of lock on, you start to lose a little bit of tension in the wheel and it gets a little bit loose and slightly scary. But I only experienced that once a day when I was pushing on a little bit harder. But all in all, yes, this has been a wonderful day. I hope you've enjoyed this video, potentially just living vicariously through me on my first ever experience in a Ferrari. Needless to say, if you do have any cars sat in your driveway that are interesting, you think you'd like to see on YouTube, it doesn't have to be a Ferrari, but it sure can be, then do send me an email to the email on screen now, hello at itsjoel.co.uk, and we can get a date in the diary. I've been looking forward to doing more of these reviews alongside some of my own ownership experiences too. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope if you've enjoyed this video and you're not already, you could subscribe to the channel. We're painstakingly close to 100K now, and it'd be wonderful to hit that milestone soon. Also, if you haven't by now, do go ahead and subscribe to Rowan's channel, the owner of this beautiful 360 at RC Classic Garage. Link is in the description. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next video very, very soon.